All right, everyone. This is Angle Relationships Lesson 1. Um, first of all, in Angle Relationships, we have to know four different types of angles. Just to start off, obtuse angles qualify as any angle that measures greater than 90 degrees and less than 180. So that would be any kind of angle that would look sort of like this. All right. Those will be all, all be obtuse. Acute angles are between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Of course, our 90 degree angle is our right angle here, measures exactly 90 degrees. And then as we also have a straight angle. The measure of this is 180 degrees altogether. All right. I also had you make a table of angle relationships. Two main categories that we're going to be adding to throughout the semester. Okay. The first category is angles which are congruent. All right. And for all of these angles where they're congruent, we know that we can make the equation that one angle equals the other. That's what congruent means. So if it tells us they're congruent, then they're congruent. No matter what it says here and what it says here, they must be equal. Also, if they are vertical angles, they are congruent. So if lines intersect and you find angles that are directly across the intersection from one another, they are also congruent. Okay? If it said 4 up here and it said x down here, you know that x equals 4. All right. Over here, our other type. Angles which sum to 180. All right? Sometimes we're going to get angles and we won't really know what their relationship is to each other. They won't necessarily be equal, but we know that if we add one with the other, we're going to get 180 degrees. Here we have the core example, supplementary angles. When angles form together a straight angle, we can see that this angle right here plus this angle has to equal 180. They might not be the same angle as each other, but we know that when we take one of them and add it to the other, what we get all together is a straight angle. All right. One other type, angles which sum to 90 degrees, we call these complementary. Sort of similar to supplementary, but here, again, we don't know if they're the same angle or not, but we do know that when we take one of them and we add it to the other, we get 90. You can just see that they both fit inside the 90 degree angle, so one plus the other has to equal 90 degrees. All right, let's get into some examples. All right, the first example, we need to solve for x. Okay, and when we are solving for x, we know that what we're going to need is an equation. You can't solve something if there's no equation. So we're going to just start with an equal sign. All right, here's our diagram that we're given, though. Diagrams might be ugly. Um, no big deal. As long as you can see the relationship, you'll be OK. We're given that this angle measures 2x degrees, 2 times x degrees. This one measures 40. Taking a look at these, we know that we're going to get some equation out of this diagram. It's easy to get an equation, but it's hard to get the right equation. Anyone can get any old equation. We need to make sure we get the right one. We notice that these two angles are supplementary. All right? But we can't see that. We know that one angle plus the other angle forms a straight angle. So we know that whatever we have right here plus whatever we have right here must make 180 degrees. So we can write the equation 2x plus 40 equals 180. I'm just using the parentheses to emphasize the point that it's whatever we have here. This one plus this one must be 180 because they are on the same side of this straight line. We solve this quickly. We know that 2x plus 40 equals 180, so 2x must equal 140, and divide by your integer coefficient, so x equals 70. All right, that's example one. Moving on to example number two, what we're going to do is also solve for x. Okay, this time, our, exam our diagram looks a little bit different. We see we have a right angle here. 
but it's being cut by a line. All right, which which implies that this little angle plus this other angle must add up to 90 degrees. We're going to need that when we do our equation. Here we know this one is 60 degrees, but this one this one we know is 3x degrees. We're going to have to find x. So, let's make our equation. We see that the relationship here, what is it called when it adds up to 90 degrees, the two angles? Those are complementary. All right? So whatever this one is, plus this one must equal 90. Let's make that into our equation. Sixty plus three x must be ninety degrees. All right. Solve this the same way. Three x equals ninety minus sixty. Three x equals thirty. Divide by the three. Get x by itself. X equals thirty divided by three is ten. All right. We check again to make sure that we answer the question. Have we answered it? Yeah. We had to solve for x. We've got x by itself. So it's solved for x. We've answered the question. All right, now moving on to example number three. Again, we're going to solve for x. All solving for x the first day. Check on the next lesson to get ones where we're not just solving for x. All right, here's our diagram. One line, another line crossing. This value, 2x. This value, 8x minus 30. All right. So we know we're solving. So we know we have to always start with an equal sign. Can't solve it without an equal sign. All right. It's easy to get an equation. It's harder to get the right equation. What relationship do these angles have to one another? We know that since they are across an intersection from each other, that they qualify on our chart as vertical angles, one right across the intersection from the other. When we have vertical angles, we know that whatever we have up here must be equal to whatever we have down here. All right? That is going to help us write our equation. So whatever we have here, we got 2x. That has to be equal in measure to this one right across the intersection. 8x minus 30. All right. Again, we're going to try to solve for x. So since this is a linear equation, we're going to bring all our x's to one side, all our constants to the other side. So let's bring this 8x over to this side. It's going to become a negative 8x. And we've got 2x and negative 8x, which is going to be negative 6x equals negative 30. Divide by our integer coefficient, negative 6, negative 6. These guys divide out, so we get x equals negative 30 divided by negative 6. Negative divided by negative is positive. 30 divided by 6 is 5. So x equals 5. All right, that's it. Make sure you get the right equations.